Remote viewing confirms Ashtar Command base hidden in Jupiter's clouds. On December 17, the Farsight Institute released the results of multiple remote viewing sessions investigating the alleged existence of an Ashtar Command and whether it had a floating base hidden in the clouds of Jupiter. The results of the remote viewing sessions conducted using blind scientific protocols support the claims of several recent contactees that the Ashtar Command existed and that its Jupiter facility was used as a meeting place for secret agreements reached between 14 spacefaring nations and several extraterrestrial organizations in July 2021. Dr. Courtney Brown, the founder of the Farsight Institute, released a press and video statement introducing the goals of the remote viewing sessions and the targets being investigated. He explained why he chose the target for part one of the project. More recent information suggested by some authors not connected with Farsight seems to suggest that there was a planetary collective called the Ashtar Collective that was made up of various species. And it's said that this collective was infiltrated by the reptilians, the same reptilians that we here at Farsight have found plaguing modern day Earth. The Ashtar Command is said to have broken off from that collective to form a very capable military group that has facilities that are currently based inside the clouds of Jupiter. These are some of the claims made by others relating to the Ashtar Command. If such a facility does exist in the clouds of Jupiter, then they obviously would have the technological ability to survive safely in this environment, and the extremely hostile environment would offer benefits such as significant levels of protection that a military facility would enjoy. It would be hard to find the facility without help. Any approach to the facility would be noticed and the ships of many species might not even be able to survive the atmospheric conditions at all in order to mount an attack. So from our perspective, it sort of makes sense that such a facility in the clouds of Jupiter might exist. While Dr. Brown did not specify who the authors were discussing the Ashtar Command facility, these likely included Elena Danan, Megan Rose and myself in our respective coverage of this facility and its involvement in alleged secret agreements that occurred in July 2021. I will return to this information later. In his press statement and video, Dr. Brown explained the remote viewing sessions were conducted using blind scientific protocols where the viewers were told nothing about the project or the specific target. They were only told there is a numerical target, for example T1, or an alphanumeric subject, for example SA, and they should remote view it. This scientific protocol prevents the problem of front-loading whereby remote viewers insert their own biases and judgments into the sessions when they know about the targets in advance. In the sessions themselves, one of the remote viewers, Aziz Brown, Courtney's son, illustrated the importance of the blind scientific protocols when he explained how he had formed a judgment about the target and found this immediately influenced the session until he consciously withdrew his assumption. This exemplified the necessity of blind scientific conditions for remote viewing sessions so viewers don't allow their biases and preconceptions to creep in and influence the session. Unfortunately, there are far too many individuals, some with significant public followings, claiming to remote view targets without using any blind scientific protocols. This leads to a lot of front-loading, thereby significantly impacting the accuracy of their results and the overall credibility of remote viewing as an intelligence gathering tool. After the sessions involving up to four trained and very experienced remote viewers associated with the Farsight Institute were completed, Dr. Brown released his conclusion about the project. He said, Regarding the first target, we simply wanted to know if such a thing as the Ashtar Command actually exists in the clouds of Jupiter. As far as our data indicate, it does. It seems to be a secretive facility and it does not seem to be involved in communicating with the Earth population. I personally highly doubt that anyone in the Ashtar Command is channeling information to human receivers on Earth. It makes no sense for them to try to compete 
with Orion and reptilian efforts to manipulate the human population through the spread of disinformation. If they were interested in interacting with humanity on a more personal level, they would be located closer to Earth and not hidden inside the clouds of Jupiter. As best as we can discern, they are primarily a military organization. There are some important takeaways from Dr. Brown's conclusions. First, the Ashtar Command does exist and has a base in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter. Second, he is skeptical that members of the Ashtar Command are directly communicating with humans on Earth. Third, the Ashtar Command is primarily a military organization. Regarding his first conclusion, this is highly significant. It means that in addition to other extraterrestrial organizations identified by Dr. Brown and his remote viewing teams in earlier projects, the Galactic Federation of Worlds, the Draconian Reptilian Empire, the Orion Grey Alliance, and the Dominion, there is another extraterrestrial organization monitoring human affairs and our solar system. Even more significantly, the findings of the remote viewing sessions confirm claims first made by Elena Danan and later supported by Megan Rose that the Ashtar Command has a large floating city or base suspended high in Jupiter's atmosphere. As Dr. Brown reasoned, this would provide a stealthy base of operations for activities throughout our solar system and the Earth itself. This conclusion is especially important when it comes to claims by Danan and Rose that a series of meetings involving different galactic organizations and representatives of 14 spacefaring nations took place in July 2021. I covered these meetings in earlier articles along with supporting evidence. The results of Farsight's remote viewing project adds to the body of evidence that such meetings did occur. Second, Dr. Brown is very skeptical about claims of individuals claiming to be in telepathic communications with members of the Ashtar Command. Historically, the first individual claiming to communicate telepathically with the Ashtar Command was George Van Tassel in 1952, who was followed by Trevor James Constable in 1958 and many others. Today, there are several individuals claiming to be in telepathic communication with the Ashtar Command and Dr. Brown rightly points out that many of these are simply ruses by service to self extraterrestrials masquerading as the Ashtar Command. Does his skepticism also apply to the contact experiences and telepathic communications of Elena Danan and Megan Rose? To answer this question, it's helpful to point out that Danan says that she was actually taken to the Ashtar Command base and witnessed it firsthand and met personnel there. Second, both Danan and Rose have been in telepathic communications with representatives of the Galactic Federation of Worlds who have shared information about the Ashtar facility. Neither claims to be in touch with the Ashtar Command itself, let alone channeling information from base personnel. Third, Dr. Brown reveals that the Ashtar Command is a military organization. This is consistent with George Van Tessel's original channelings from different Ashtar Command personnel, including Ashtar himself. In her two books, A Gift from the Stars and We Will Never Let You Down, Elena Dunan described the origins of the Ashtar Command and its military functions in our solar system today. Similarly, Megan Rose discussed the Ashtar Command base and its military functions in her book, Welcome to the Future. The Farsight Remote Viewing Ashtar Project confirms the accuracy of these claims. In conclusion, remote viewing is an important intelligence gathering tool on extraterrestrial affairs and exopolitics. However, it should be conducted using blind scientific protocols to get the best results, Otherwise, front-loading can significantly reduce its effectiveness. In this regard, I support the work of Dr. Brown and other professional remote viewers in encouraging the use of more scientific protocols in their remote viewing projects. In terms of my ongoing investigation of the meetings and agreements reached at the Ashtar Command base in July, the results of Farsight's most recent project are very significant. It gives me more confidence that the meetings occurred. Finally, the Ashtar Command appears to be part of an alliance of positive or service to other 
extraterrestrial organizations working with an Earth alliance of spacefaring nations led by US Space Command in globally transformative events happening behind the scenes. This has been Dr. Michael Sala with Exopolitics Today. I thank Dr. Courtney Brown for permission to use audio extracts from his Ashtar Command remote viewing project. Please note, Dr. Brown's full conclusions and the remote viewing sessions themselves can be watched at his Farsight Institute website. Finally, I want to announce the launch of my new website, exopoliticstoday.com, featuring podcasts and videos of articles and interviews published on exopolitics.org. Please remember to like and subscribe to Exopolitics Today.